where we are. So through the modern history then of, of evolution, I wonder maybe things became a little um, clearer as when there was more splits because I'm, I'm, I'm curious how, how we went from, okay, you, you have a, a wolf that turns into a more domesticated, what, what we would think of as a dog. And then I, I imagine most of those dogs were fairly similar. Maybe they moved with humans and, and there was a little a bit of a split along the way, like a, a, a cow in the America is very different than a cow in India, but Indian cows are very similar. American cows are very similar. But dogs, now you have this explosion of Chihuahua to uh, German Shepherd to Labrador and everything in between. When when did that start happening? Sure. Well, so Shane, that's, that's you know, that's an amazing question. And I think that something what there's no there's no one process it's not the outcome of one process it's the outcome of at least two distinct processes process number one okay first process any animal that is distributed widely across the surface of the planet including like us exists in quite a diversity of forms because the kind of, I mean, we have air conditioning and everything and heating, but the, until very recently, the kind of body you needed to survive in the far north, in the cold places, obviously the far south as well, Terra del Fuego, is quite different from the kind of body that you need to survive in hot places. And this is still present in human populations today. Americans of the same ethnic heritage born in the south of the United States grow up to have different body proportions than their cousins who are who are born and grow up in Alaska. Even though we have heating and we have air conditioning, you need different body forms to cope with different temperatures. And of course, we see that people from different parts of the world have different um, skin color because, you know, if you, I mean, the kind of skin color that you and I have is great for places in the far north where the ultraviolet is very weak. But where I now live in Phoenix, Arizona, this is completely the wrong skin color yeah, to have. You, and I you don't have a, a natural sunscreen. <laughs> exactly. And I spent a decade in Australia, which has the highest skin cancer rates in the world because you've got this unbelievably powerful UV and you've got these people of Northern European stock living there. Okay. So what's true in our species is true in every species. Wolves, before we started wiping them out, wolves existed everywhere from the equator to the Arctic Circle, all through the Northern Hemisphere. And they had different forms because they were suited to different climates. Nowadays, if I say, picture a wolf, what pops into your head is a big animal with thick fur. And that's because the only wolves left in the United States anywhere, really, are way up in the North in the cold environment where we never quite wiped them out. But you know, there were wolves here in here in Arizona. I mean, there's only like a hundred of them left. We call them Mexican wolves and they're much smaller. They are much finer fur, you know, so there always were what biologists call land races of wolves and dogs being similarly diverse around the planet there always were land races of dogs. And when you look at the earliest pictorial representations, the tombs of ancient Egypt, uh, ancient Greek pictorial representations and so on, you can pick up that as far back as there's any record of dogs at all, there are at least a few different body forms. Bigger, heavier animals in cold places, slimmer animals in warm places. Okay. So land races is part one, but then humans started getting interested in what dogs look like and how they act. And I cannot say with certainty when this really started to happen, but I can, I can tell you two stories. One story is you can, the ancient Egyptians who were people who were recording artworks continuously from like 5,000 years ago right up to 2,000 years ago. And you can look and you can see that at a certain point around 3,000 years ago, miniature dogs appear. And that's very, very interesting. 
Dwarfism is a genetic abnormality that can occur in any mammal. There are humans who are dwarfs. There, uh, there was a thing in the news. There was a dwarf giraffe at some zoo somewhere, right? You can have a genetic accident and ka you're only one third the size that all the other members of your species are. Now, in nature, that happens from time to time, but those individuals don't survive because they can't run as fast. They can't, you know, what, what use is a one third size giraffe? How's it ever gonna eat the leaves on the trees, right? <laughs> so, so when that happens, it dies out immediately in nature. So it's very, very interesting that the ancient Egyptians start showing at a quite identifiable point, they start making artistic representations of dwarf dogs. And what that means is that they must have, somebody must have said, oh my goodness, this one's really tiny. Isn't that cute? If we could just find another one, we could put them together and they could have children and then we'd have a whole load of them. And that's what they must have done. They must have recognized that there was something interesting about this animal. And they must have had some very basic understanding that if you bred like with like, you could get more like that and that this would be cute and would be fun. And so, so you get that kind of human intervention, human messing around starts to happen. And then, you know, the Romans who wrote books about dogs, they say things like, hey, in India, they have these really interesting dogs. In the British Isles, they have these other dogs that can run much faster than the dogs we have now. And so they must have started to identify the different land races as their empire got bigger and they see different kinds of dogs in different places. And they're like, this is really cool. Let's hold on to these and um, let's keep them breeding together. And so that must have bumbled along with a very primitive understanding of genetics. Well, no understanding of genetics, very primitive understanding of inheritance very primitive measures. They had collars, they had leashes, they could they could make uh, kennels, primitive understanding of how to keep animals separate so that the distinctness of them would be maintained right up until the middle of the 19th century, when finally they're developing a, a close to modern understanding of inheritance. And, and this is especially my own people, the British at first, were the first to go completely nutso at like, well, let's get the smallest ones, breed them together, and they'll have small offspring, and then take the two smallest from the litter and make them have sex together, make these brother and sister have sex together, smaller, 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 let's see how tiny we can make them, or bigger, 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 let's see how big we can make them, or, you know, we want them to have, you know, whatever. And that's yeah. the whole explosion of, um, the whole explosion of dog breeds which is really, you know, in this in this framework, this is a very modern phenomenon. I mean, a dog like the German Shepherd, which is now so popular, didn't come into being until the early years of the 20th century. The Golden Retriever, the most popular dog that was ever invented, was created because there was a Scottish Lord, you know, they had retrievers, right? A retriever is a dog, you know, bang, bang, you've got your gun, your rifle, the bird falls down. You don't want to have to go and collect what you've killed. You have a dog, it goes and gets it for you. That's called a retriever. And they were primarily black until this Scottish Lord goes and visits a friend in some other part of the British Isles. And they go to the circus and there are these Russian dogs at the circus that are orange, yellow, gold. It's like, wow, this is so cool. Imagine wow. if I had golden retrievers, nobody would be able to confuse their retrievers with my retrievers. My retrievers would really stand out. Wouldn't that be cool? And so that's exactly what he does. And this is the 1860s when this is happening, which in this, in this frame is very, very recent, very, very modern.